Hey, Happy New Year from Australia and welcome back to my channel for 2024. And we're going to kick this year off with another little look at one of my current favourite guitarists, Matteo Mancuso, with an incredible improvised solo that he did on The Kinks' You Really Got Me, or I guess it's become Van Halen's You Really Got Me, or any version with shredding guitar on it becomes the Van Halen version. So he played this live on Italian TV recently. Now look, the entire tabs are available over on my Patreon, but... Let's just dive in and pull this thing apart and see if we can't steal some little ideas from this ridiculous player. So right from the start, I mean, there's, <laughs> I love everything he does. I, I don't know. So right from the get-go, over that D add nine chord, he's bend, he starts bending the A note which is a note that's in the D chord. But the cool thing is he, he can hear his E string, his open E string with it. So he's kind of doing that. So I'm bending the A at the 10th fret, but also hitting the E string. Now his is quieter because he's got his little mutey thing on there. And then the next thing he does, right on beat one, as the riff is back to A, he bends the C note, the minor third, up to the D, the fourth. So that's a great place to start. You know, most of us would start on bending up to the A note or maybe the, the G, the, the seventh, or the classic, like Eddie did. But no, Matteo is bending up to the fourth, which is it just sounds different straight away. And then he bends it. Let's have let's keep listening. <laughs> so then he's got a couple of little chromatics in there just to remind you that this guy knows his way around the neck. So he's starting on the eleventh fret of the G string, the F sharp note, which is the sixth. Again, an interesting note choice. To the A, the root note, tenth fret on the B string, pulls off to the ninth fret before changing position and going down a C triad. So 8th fret on the B string, 9th fret on the G string, 10th fret on the D string. It's a C triad, or I guess it's over A, so it's an A minor 7 triad. Or straight down that pentatonic scale there. Then he does a little... So that's just 9, 8, 7 on the G string. Then he moves back 7, 6, 5. That's just straight out of the blues scale. So if we were in the pentatonic shape, but he's playing it here. Then he moves back, which is just a chromatic passage from the fourth to the minor third. Fourth, major third, minor third. That's just a little pentatonic lick at the end. Straight down the pentatonic scale. Then after he slides from five to three on the A string, straight back to the D note on the fifth fret on the A string to the root note, fifth fret on the E string, then back up. So hammering on from the C note, the third fret on the A string, D note, fifth fret, sliding up to the E. Yeah, very cool lick. <laughs> Brilliant. So that next bit, that's, that was one of the first things that really caught my ear. So we're still over the main riff here, the G to A. So it's just an A vamp, really. So what he's doing there is playing a C triad to a D triad. It's not jazz, but it's ingenious. It's, it just sounds so wonderful. It's, it's out of the ordinary to what we would normally hear. So the way he's playing that, he's sliding into the seventh fret, an E note on the A string and then first finger on the fifth fret of the D string and then the G string. So that's that's a C chord. It's just those three notes in a C chord. Then he moves that up two frets to make it a D chord. Then he does the same thing uh, in the next octave. So the bottom of that C bar chord 
But not only that, as if that isn't cool enough, he finishes it off by bending up to the sixth in the, in the chord. So he bends the E note there, the 12th fret on the E string, up to an F sharp note. That's brilliant. You know, again, it's like the very start of this solo, how he bent to that D note over the A chord. This time he's bending to an F sharp note. So he's, he's playing, he's making it a 13 chord, basically. <sighs> Let's keep going. <laughs> All right, so a little nod to Van Halen there by doing a tapping passage, but Matteo's tapping passages are insane there. He's got such command of the fretboard. Okay, that seems insane. But this pattern is actually quite simple. It's just six notes that he repeats across the scale. So if we look at the start of it, so I'm tapping... Uh, with my second finger, by the way, so I don't have to put my pick anywhere. Matteo does the same thing, I think. He taps with his second finger a lot. Tapping on the 17th fret of the E string. Releasing to the 15th fret with my pinky. And then pulling off to the 10th fret, where my first finger is. Then we tap the same fret on the next string, the 17th fret. But then we go to the 13th fret and pull off to the first finger again. Now that's all he's doing. So then he starts it again. So that pattern we did on the first string, now he's doing it on the second. So the thing is the pattern always starts on the 17th fret. And it always ends on the first finger, on whichever fret is in keeping with the scale. So 10, 10, 9, 10, 10. But the note in between those two fingers changes. It might be with the little finger, or the second finger, little finger, second finger, little finger, second finger, little finger, second finger. Now the only difference is, when I slowed this down on YouTube a lot, I could hear that for the very first part of the scale, he kind of got all four notes in. But then the rest of it, he falls into the pattern. Ah, oh, that is brilliant. That's just so, it's just like a cascade of notes. It's like eruption, that lava flowing down all over again. <laughs> all right, let's keep going. <laughs> so the whole B section here is a little bit jazzy. I mean, the start of it is, is a blues leak. Um, but then he's got this. So I love his use of chromatics in that. Got a couple of really weird notes in there. For a start, we've got that, the fourth down to the minor third. Same as he did down an octave lower near the start there, but he's making it sound super jazzy this time. Then playing the ninth, flat ninth, down to the root. Then he goes a couple of notes lower down that same chromatic descent. So he's played every note from E down to A. Then he's back into the pentatonic scale. But then he plays a back up the root, the flat nine and the nine to the flat five. Now, I don't know how much of this is intentional. This, this is at lightning speed. You can hardly hear these notes. And, and that one in particular is very staccato. So I don't know if he m meant to do it. I mean, that, that's the wrong way to put it because he clearly has the facility to mean <laughs> all of this stuff all over the guitar. But it's, uh, yeah, it, it's just, I don't know if he's thinking of a particular harmonic structure and has chosen the note for that reason or is just blitzing through notes in the, in the vicinity. <laughs> I don't know. And the end, back to the 
the pentatonic scale, the B minor pentatonic. All right, then. <laughs> so then that repetitive thing. This is the E7 part. And he's playing, it's, it's groups of seven. I mean, they're not all exactly the same, but it's pretty much groups of seven. It's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I think of the last three, the triplet is like five, six, seven. Now I love that because that's like a E7 altered, it's like a super jazzy chord. He's got the root note at the bass there, he's got a sharp 9 and a sharp 11 or a flat 5. Now that last one he doesn't quite get 7 notes in, it's more like uh, 5. Then the last bit is like a blues lick. So this is still over the E, he bends the 7th fret up to a B note and then that's like an E minor E pentatonic lick so we're on the first string 15 17 19 back to 15 17 on the B string 16 on the G string 15 17 on the B string then he goes so we're grabbing that 16th fret on the G string, sliding back to the 14th, back to the 12th, back to the 15th, uh, 14th, 14 on the D string, blues run, blue scale run, 12, 14, 15, 16, 12 with a little bend. So then he finishes it off. 14, 15, 17, 17, 15, 17. Wonderful. So there you go. Knock yourself out and have some fun with that. Don't forget to throw me a like, a comment, a request, a correction. Uh, head on over to the Patreon, as I said, if you want to throw me a little bit of support. See you soon.